News and Talk, 1380 WAOK, the voice of the community. It's your brother. Man. <laughs> Talk radio the hard way. <laughs> <laughs> and we're in the midst of the WAOK Sister Soul Talk series. Today, board certified plastic and reconstructive surgeon who is practicing in the city. And she does news, sports, weather, and traffic <laughs> as well. Uh, she's a graduate of Spelman College, uh, where she graduated cum laude. Uh, laude, uh, and with a BS in biology. And she's a graduate of Meharry Medical College in Nashville. Uh, my, my doctors don't come from Meharry, they can't be touching on me. <laughs> Uh, as well as she's uh, the first African-American woman resident in plastic surgery from the Baylor College of Medicine in Houston. Uh, she's the owner of Breast, Body, Beauty, Plastic, and Reconstructive Surgery in Marietta, Georgia. Ladies and gentlemen, sisters and brothers, put your hands together for my dear sister, Dr. Aisha Barron. Hello. Hey there. <laughs> How you doing, Sister Baron? I'm good. Thanks good. for having me. Oh, it's my pleasure. All right, so this is the Sister Soul Talk series, and mm -hmm. I have a battery of questions that, I'm about, yes, that I'm about to <laughs> pelt you with. Ooh, <laughs> all these mili all this military talk. You I know. know. Uh, no, but uh, we, we got a, a certain uh, set of query that we'd like to introduce um, because other sisters who have come and sat where, where you're sitting uh, for this Sister Soul Talk series have been asked the same questions and so I guess we what we're trying to do is get a baseline sure. to begin to, in order to get a, a grip on how it is uh, that you and the others uh, have become as successful as you have become. Mm -hmm. And so... Let us begin All right. with the leadership questions, number one. There are many challenges that we face, we, not me, but that black women face, Okay. being female in male-dominated business environments. Mm -hmm. Have you experienced that, and how have you dealt with it, if you can? I have. I think most women have. Uh, mm -hmm. You know, I think the challenges are really getting your voice heard and feeling that your production or whatever your talent is, is valued, and that you are allocated the same amount that a man would be, uh, you know, according to those talents or those gifts that you practice or have studied or anything like that. And so I think it's always a challenge uh, as a woman, as a black woman as well, to really have your voice heard um, in a level way in which you're not being judged as an angry black woman mm -hmm. or uh, to where you know, you're know you not seen as giving attitude or anything like that where anyone else, mm -hmm. if they were to say the same thing, would just be right. considered assertive or, right. or sure of themselves. Mm -hmm. um, you know, and in addition to that, what I've encountered mm -hmm. is um, you know, doing great work and not feeling valued. You know, promises that could have been made and everything like that, you know, uh, and if I feel, I feel that if I were a man, then, you know, some negotiations may have been different, right. <laughs> you know, yeah. um, and, you know, in instances like that, you know, I actually had to find the confidence within myself uh, mm -hmm. to say, okay, you know, what, I'm going to step away from this, mm -hmm. you know, I'm going to find the courage and say, you know, I deserve better. Right. Yeah, because uh, I guess... Uh, respect begins with self. It begins with self-respect. Absolutely. No Absolutely. Doubt. So what hardships have you faced and overcome in your professional life? Um, hardships, uh, thankfully, there haven't been many. Mm -hmm. um, I come from a very stable family background, and um, my parents have always instilled in me, you know, to really believe in myself, know who I am, um, and they've been really supportive of me over my lifetime. Um, but probably the greatest hardship um, that I encountered was during residency, my chief, my, I'm sorry, intern year of residency, which was your mm -hmm. first year. Right. Um, I was diagnosed with stage four uh, uh, large B-cell lymphoma. Oh. And so 
Um, it was and a break huge, that down. To what kind of right? cancer? What kind of cancer? <laughs> so it's basically a blood cancer. It's okay. similar in the family of like leukemias, yes. myelomas. Mm -hmm. um, it's a blood cancer, and um, wow. I was diagnosed in my first year. Mm -hmm. You know, and um, it's funny when you're in uh, medical school and you match, uh, you create a rank list of the different programs you like to go to. Yes. And you know, Harry, we always say we pray over that rank list. Right. Right. <laughs> and I prayed over it, and I um, uh, I was given my first choice, which was Baylor, mm -hmm. and that's where I was supposed to be. Mm -hmm. um, you know, I was diagnosed with this illness um, very early in my training, and my program was ridiculously supportive. Okay. Um, my program director and the program chair uh, took me underneath their wing, and they, you know, they made sure that you know, physically <laughs> I was well, as well mm -hmm. as mentally, um, mm -hmm. and supported me, my co-residents support, supported me and everything. And, you know, I, I was able to walk across the street and go to MD Anderson, right. one of okay. the greatest one. cancer centers right. in the world, right. Right. Um, and get treatment, you mm -hmm. know. Um, they could have told me, you know what, um, you need to go back home to Atlanta, mm -hmm. take a leave of absence or, you know, something like that, get mm -hmm. treated, maybe you can come back. But they didn't do that to me. Okay. You know, they said, you know, we're going to keep you here. We're going to, you know, make sure that you can, you know, get your treatments and everything like that. And it was just, you know, it was really a blessing. You know, it was really, really yeah. a blessing. And I'm thankful for that. But, you know, that was one of the real, you know, hardships that I faced during my training. Okay. So what advice would you give to other women who tend to find themselves in non-traditional roles? Um, you know, really just know who you are. Be grounded in who you are and what you believe in. Um, you know, make sure that your, your voice is heard, uh, you know, respectfully, you mm -hmm. know, um, you understand that you're not, you know, particularly, you know, spe less special or more special just because you are a woman, but, you know, command that same respect that you think that everybody else would get. No doubt. When we return, uh, cause we're headed toward the bottom of the hour and of course, you know, there's no place to go from there but to the top. <laughs> we'll continue our conversation with Dr. Aisha Barron, uh, quite a impressive sister and uh, she looked like Vanessa Williams too. And <laughs> anybody ever say that? No. Uh, well, I guess I was just looking at but Vanessa I'm... Williams on, I was looking at Shaft over there. I'll take it as a compliment. <laughs> okay. <laughs> okay. Uh, uh, not the Shaft, the Vanessa right. Williams. <laughs> when we come back on the other side of the break, we will continue with our conversation with Dr. Aisha Barron, plastic surgeon. <laughs> Uh, here in the city called the A. I'm your brother, and I'll be glad when we get back with more on News and Talk 1380 WAOK.